Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's mid-August here, it's uh, berry picking time. Rather late in the season, the cloudberries have already gone, it's okay, I've got some photos of those I can show you. Uh, but I should be able to find the rest of the common berries that we have in this part of northern Scandinavia. And, uh, well, let's go and have a look what we can find. So this is bilberry. And the plant next to it is bog bilberry. There's no berries on this at the moment, but the berries look identical. But they don't quite taste the same. The bilberry, I think, is nicer. But if you look at the difference in the size of the leaves and the roundness of the leaves, and one good way of telling is if you look how woody that looks, whereas the fresh stems on this are green. So this is a relative of the cultivated blueberry. It's actually called a blueberry in uh, most Scandinavian languages. Uh, Blowbear in Swedish and Mustika in Finnish. But the, uh, the blueberry is the cultivated American species. It's bigger, it's sweeter. Uh, the blueberry is bigger and sweeter, but it doesn't have quite as nice a taste. Another difference is, if you bite a blueberry open, the flesh inside is pretty much clear. Uh, yeah, bilberries are lovely, really, really nice. Bog bilberry, quite nice as well. Uh, oh, I'll have the rest of them. Quite nice as well, but not quite, not quite as flavoursome. And they're very, very common. So here's a bog bilberry with some berries actually growing on it. And some, well, compared to some bilberries, all these berries here are actually growing on an old anthill. Okay, these little blackberries here, these are crowberries. So it's a member of the Erica family. Absolutely packed with vitamins, these things. Really, really good for you. Not quite as tasty as the bilberries. We've got one, we've got a bilberry here for comparison. But if you mix the two together, then they're really good. The leaves are very distinctive. Really short, stumpy little leaves. Yeah, you can see it's just, it's like a bell heather, member of the Erica family. And again, they're very, very common. Okay, so here we've got an important one. These are lingonberries. They make excellent jam. Around here it's a very typical meal. It'd be to have reindeer with mashed potatoes and lingonberry jam. So, they're not all that nice on their own. Rather bitter tasting. Well, they're not bad, but they're really nice in a jam. If you look at the shape of the leaves and the, the dark green colour, quite oval, quite, quite kind of, quite shiny, waxy looking. And uh, these are usually the last berries that you can pick in the season and the first. You can find these frozen uh, when the when the snow thaws. You can normally find some of these that are still good to eat that have been frozen all winter. Dwarf coronel, otherwise known as bunch berries. 
I'm too late in the year to show you the berries, which aren't poisonous, but they're not very nice either. Uh, they're red berries, which you could possibly confuse with lingonberries. This grows usually next to water, and uh, a good way to distinguish it is if you look the uh, veins in the leaves, they all run parallel to the vein down the centre rather than branching off that vein. That's because it's a monocotyledon rather than a dicotyledon. It's a cornice, it's a dogwood. So if you're familiar with other dogwoods, the leaves look somewhat similar. And uh, it's only red because of the time of year, obviously. So this is Alpine Bearberry. Lovely little blackberries. It turns red in the autumn. And it's easily identified by uh, the net like structure on its on its leaves. So see how close we can get to that. Okay, so the the Finns call this grouseberry. Riegon Maria. So uh, eaten by a slightly less formidable animal. This is the kind of area that it grows in. These berries people go crazy for in the summer round here. This is the cloudberry. Notice the lobes, crinkly leaves, the berries ripen from red to a nice orangey yellow colour. They grow all over the swamps and bogs around here and they make an absolutely fantastic jam. Okay guys, so we're right at the end of our berry picking season here in Northern Finland. Uh, further south in Scandinavia, you'll still have some time, uh, but this may be more useful to people next year, uh, at least in at least in this area. Uh, well, also in the south, apart from having a longer berry picking season, you also might be able to find wild strawberries. Uh, you might be able to find find cranberries, and. Uh, yeah, another species that I haven't included is, is rowan, uh, or mountain ash, uh, yeah, different words for the same, for the same plant, different name. Uh, mountain ash, uh, if you, if you Google rowan berry jelly, that's a really, really nice recipe. And, uh, yeah, apart from that, cultivated areas, you might find black currants. Uh, I have seen you growing in uh, parks and gardens in the south of Finland. Uh, the yew tree is a very, very toxic plant. The berries are actually edibles. They're sweet, quite pleasant tasting. But the seed you have to spit out. And really, it's not worth the risk. Because that seed is a little bit more poisonous than anything that you really ever want to put in your mouth. Uh, that I'm aware of, I don't know of any poisonous berries that actually grow in this area. But yeah, make sure you're 100% sure of what you're eating. Okay, so always with foraging wild food, always play it safe. Be very careful, you don't want to make yourself ill. Well guys, thank you very much for watching and uh, please like and subscribe and everything and I'll see you again for another Kukali Bushcraft video. Bye for now.